if you enjoy watching television or you're raising children or grandchildren that enjoy watching television, I highly recommend that you watch this video. stars are like gods and goddesses. Magic only exists if you allow it, if you open yourself up to the possibility of, you know. <laughs> Currently, sex is suppressed. Sorry, your day is over. Died for nothing. My advice is to sleep with as many people as possible. God, let me give you a little inside information about God. Jesus, I'll say it again. Jesus, he's a sadist. Worship that never. There's a lot of talk right now in Hollywood, a lot of it about spiritism. Is it real? Is it not real? It's like the jury's out. A lot of people are going to be blown away to see that it's very real and it's very alive. And what this video is, is it's the ultimate reality show because it looks at Hollywood celebrities and the inside people in Hollywood to see if in fact spiritism does influence them in their own words and in turn if it does, how does that influence us? How are so many of Hollywood's most famous actors and actresses able to be so amazingly effective and convincing in their performances? That guy was so electrifying that it came through the television. How is it that they can move us to laughter, tears, or anger at the drop of a hat? Are they truly gifted with natural talent, as many suggest? You see this and you just, you're dazzled by their talent. Do they possess a creative streak of genius that is unknown to most men? Or unknown to most men, are they in fact possessed? Is it possible that these actors and actresses are possessed by demonic spirits who have a specific agenda to fulfill? Oscar award winning actor Denzel Washington told 60 Minutes exactly how he brings forth his best performances. Basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits and when I came out, I was in charge. Powerful scene. Powerful scene. It, it was, I couldn't have acted that. I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that. What, are you going to smoke that? Nope. You are. <laughs> Hell if I am. Yeah, yeah Jesus free. Yeah, Jesus free. The one-woman entertainment empire known as Oprah has strong affiliations with the demonic realm. The most familiar face on television says, You can not only use your body and physical self. This is how I see acting. I ask my body to be the carrier for the spirits of those who have come before me in a way that is most meaningful to the character. Just become the vehicle for that character. Calling out for these entities to take her over so that she may become a sparkling puppet, Oprah admits of her work before the camera. I tried to empty myself and let the spirit inhabit me. With her global influence, her shows have become a smorgasbord for the New Age agenda. Maybe there's no devil, 
It's just God when he's drunk. Robin Williams, who is perhaps one of the world's most celebrated comedians, admits that he becomes possessed during his acting performances. Yeah, literally it's like possession. All of a sudden you're in. You just get this energy that starts going. With movies that promote homosexuality, magic, cross-dressing, and New Age philosophy, it is not hard to understand the demonic element that is using him as a puppet. Given all the credit for his impressionable acting to the spirit world, Williams adds, But there's also that thing. It is possession. In the old days, you'd be burned for it. But there is something empowering about it. I mean, it is a place where you are totally. It is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where you really can become this other force. <laughs> Oscar award-winning Shirley MacLaine's 40-plus films have escalated her to superstar status, and she has used this popularity to further her cause as a prominent player to advance the New Age movement. If you're somebody like me, and there's millions of us out there who are interested in astrology, meditation, numerology... It should be no surprise to learn that she too undergoes possession that results in successful performances. MacLaine explains... I had seen so many channels and mediums over the past few years, I decided I would apply the same thing to show business. I simply channeled the character that we had created. This time I allowed the character to inhabit me. I trusted that the magic would work. Channeling and inspiration had become one and the same. Why would demonic spirits be so interested in possessing movie stars? Because according to the scriptures, one of Satan's primary objectives for the planet is to bring mankind into a massive spiritual deception in preparation for the Antichrist. The book of Revelation states that Satan is called the great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world. Satan's grand finale to deceive the whole world will be through a man called the Antichrist that Satan will use to draw worship to himself. The book of Revelation further tells us and he was given authority to rule over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all the people who belong to this world will worship the beast. These amazing future events are being preceded by an occult explosion that was also prophesied over 2,000 years ago. Paul the Apostle wrote that the last days would be laden with occult teachings, doctrines, and rebellion. He stated that the Antichrist's coming would be in accord with the activity of Satan with all power, signs, and false wonders, and with all the deception of wickedness for those who perish. Satan has been brainwashing people and paving the way for this time through the influential power of Hollywood celebrities. Through the silver screen, Satan has been able to make incredible changes in the spiritual climate of the world through spreading his deceptive philosophies and teachings. Even though it may be evil that he was doing, my job in that film was to make an immoral person palatable. Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, overtly stated that television was the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. LeVay boastfully acknowledges the effectiveness TV has had in transforming us. The TV set, or satanic family altar, has grown more elaborate since the early 50s, from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions. A major religion of the masses. The Bible has already warned us about the shift from Christianity to this new religion. The Apostle Paul wrote that it would come about in the last days through evil and lying spirits. He wrote, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last days some will turn away from what we believe. They will follow lying spirits and teachings that come from demons. In other words, in the end times, evil spirits will be very actively evangelizing the world through lies and spiritual deceptions. The book of Revelation tells us that the agenda is to unite the world in false unity by igniting mankind's rebellion against God in order to seal their fate under the Antichrist. These miracle working demons caused all the rulers of the world to gather together for battle against the Lord on that great judgment day of God Almighty. Through the philosophies of the New Age movement, the world has been launched toward this false unification at breakneck speed. We feel that uh, all religions are coming around to Satanism. As Tom Hanks teaches, in our future, we will all be one mankind. LeVay's teacher and guide, the Satanist Aleister Crowley, outlined the New Age movement in 1904 from a spirit he identified as Satan. He wrote that it would consist of free sex, free drugs, and a rebellious shift against the moral values of the Bible. All the things that are continuously presented at the movies today. 
Crowley pointed to the popularity of the cinema as proof positive that we were in the new age and championed Hollywood's demonic element which would be able to trick people into accepting the rebellious new age philosophies of free sex, drugs and occultism. I guess maybe they get rid of all their demons doing their movies. The proof of the demonic element in Hollywood, as attested to by its own, is abundantly overwhelming. A lot of actors um, who don't mention their names, of course, are very much into this. Magic only exists if you allow it, if you open yourself up to the possibility of, you know. With a slew of successful movies under his belt, actor Johnny Depp confesses, I know I have demons. I'm 30 different people sometimes. From Genesis and the Garden of Eden to the Book of Revelation, we have the divine record of Satan and his evil spirits channeling through other beings. In Genesis, Satan uses a serpent to spin his age-old lies that humans can become God, that there is no death, and that one may expand their consciousness to realize such godhood through partaking of forbidden occult knowledge. It is not a coincidence that these same three basic lies form the foundation of the New Age movement today. Anton LaVey admitted that the heart of the New Age movement was really Satanism. He said, In the scores of books lining the shelves of New Age bookstores, there are instructions for guided meditations, creative visualizations, out-of-body experiences, getting in touch with your spirit guides, fortune-telling by cards, crystal balls, or the stars. What if Satanists reclaimed these for their own dark purposes and integrated them into rituals dedicated to the devil where they rightfully belong? New Agers have freely drawn upon all manner of satanic material, adapting it to their own hypocritical purposes. But in truth, all New Age labeling is again trying to play the devil's game without taking his infernal name. I am God. I am God. I am I God. God. I am God. I am God. I am God. God. After the advent of television, Satan was able to deceptively present his old venue to the public and as a result unraveled much of the Judeo-Christian ethic in the West that took nearly 2,000 years to establish and brought about a paradigm shift to New Age thinking in only a few short decades. The Greek word for actor is Hippocrates, and referred to Greek actors in theater. The reason Hippocrates linguistically sounds like the word hypocrite rather than actor is because it is from this word that we have derived the word hypocrite. This word is used over 20 times throughout God's word and solely by Jesus. This is because Jesus used it of the religious actors of his day known as the Pharisees, who were hypocritical and denied in behavior the faith they claimed to profess with their lips. When confronting and speaking the truth to the Pharisees, Jesus deliberately exposed their wicked state of heart that they hid between the mask of pseudo-righteous deeds. He said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Christ's words could have been spoken to the modern day hypocrites or actors of our day who are worshipped as modern day heroes yet whose lives are so often filled with filth and perversity. The power of the visual image is incredible. Hollywood knows how powerful they are. Advertisers know how powerful they are because they spend billions of dollars every year to get us to buy their products. So the power of the visual image isn't something that Hollywood created and thought of. And the stories in the movies, that's not something they invented. I mean, think of how oftentimes we'll go to the movies and we'll cry or we'll laugh or those different kinds of things. Hollywood didn't make that up. That's the way we were created. That's the way God made us. And the way God made us as people was to communicate to us through visions and through stories or parables. In fact, when you look at the Old Testament in the Bible, oftentimes when he's trying to communicate his ideas and his heart to mankind, he's using visions. He's giving them visions of himself. And he's also using what's called parables or stories to communicate ideas because he knows the best way to change our hearts. He knows the best way to how to communicate with us. So the devil, it says in Isaiah, I will make myself like the Most High God. So the devil, he wants to be like God, but he can't because God's perfect, God's the Almighty. So what he does is he will take what God has created and tweak it to his own purposes. And because he can't perfect perfection, what he'll do with these things, visions and stories, is he'll use them in his own way to manipulate men to change their hearts for his own good. 99% of the time, they're not stories that bring us closer to God or the Lord. They're not stories that tell us 
about the future that we can't live for right now, that we have to plan for eternity. And that's where our hearts should be, and that we need to help our families and, and help other people and, and get closer to Him and do it for His glory. Most of the time, it's all kinds of stories about sex and violence and uh, revenge and all kinds of things that don't glorify God. The best stories that Hollywood comes up with doesn't even touch or compare it to the divine story, the true divine story of God. He came down, He loved us so much that He became a man. He gave Himself up for us. He was murdered that we might have eternal life for all eternity. Think of that. And all kinds of stories in the Bible that center around things that bring our spirits life and that strengthen us and make us stronger people, men and women, children. The very thing our culture really needs right now because we're being broken down so severely. On so many different fronts, we're being hammered. The stories that Hollywood brings us so often hurt us. You know, how many times have we left a movie where we're feeling wrong inside or not great? Or something's not quite right here. You don't get that from the scripture. You don't get that from God's stories. In fact, you're built up. You know, when you're changed in a, in a new way, from the inside out, in a dynamic way. So what's happening here is with Hollywood, we have the power of the visual image, and we have these stories that Satan oftentimes is using, and we will see categorically that he's behind a lot of this. He's using them to change the hearts of men, and because they're such prominent players in our culture, it affects us all over the place, especially our kids. We know that Satan uses the power of visual images to tempt us. When Jesus was on the Mount of Temptation, Satan gave him a vision to try to get Jesus to worship him. And he led him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, If you will worship before me, it will all be yours. Jesus denied Satan's temptation and refused to worship him. However, with television and film, Satan is able to present his vision to the world 24-7, and unlike Jesus, most people are giving in to these temptations, which is an indirect expression of homage and worship to Satan. Beyond using his servants in writing and directing so many of the scripts that move so much of the world, Satan desires to have as much control of the characters in his vision as possible so as to render them all the more tempting and effective. By this we mean that he seeks to animate and energize actors and actresses in such a way that they transport the viewers into a different dimension until they emerge different people with different aspirations. Satan has pulled this off through what has been classically called demon possession. God's word uses the term medium at times to describe those who have become pawns or channels for evil spirits. When you are possessed by a spirit, you become that spirit, and you are no longer human being. While no one in their right mind would ever want to undergo demonic possession, there are those today who zealously seek and pursue communion with Satan in order to attain power, fame, and fortune. You don't understand me. You are not expected to. You are not capable of it. I am beyond your experience. Lucifer dwells within us all. That's it. Many people are not aware that Satan's purpose is to use his servants to trick us into sinful lifestyles. Harvey Weinstein, co-president of Miramax Studios, admits that film has given America an acceptance of things I don't think they would have embraced. Maybe they were tricked into it by an exciting marketing campaign, but when they came out of it, they came out different. Do I look like somebody who tried to trick you? Paul the Apostle spoke about Satan himself as an actor and that he uses other actors to snow their audiences and who are in reality servants of Satan. Paul wrote, They have fooled you by masquerading, but I am not surprised. Even Satan can masquerade himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants can also do it by pretending. In the end, they will get every bit of punishment their wicked deeds deserve. To masquerade means to cover with a mask or disguise. The Greek word is used in the Old Testament in the Septuagint of the demon-possessed King Saul who disguised himself by putting on other clothes when seeking a channeled spirit through the witch of Endor. In Jesus' day, actors were people in the heathen nations who would put on masks of the false gods they worshipped in an attempt to portray them. The better they could portray a particular deity, the better an actor they were. They were the absolute best actors when they were possessed by that demon god and could channel for him, emulating his true character. Danny Glover was Paul D. First day, when she says, Paul D, is that you? I, I couldn't even like hold myself inside my body. It was un unbelievable. What we will see is that not much has changed from then to now other than the intensity and breadth of the movement to destroy the souls of men and women. 
Aleister Crowley, considered to be the chief Satanist of the 20th century, wrote of the best way to practice becoming possessed in his book Magic in Theory and Practice. Crowley writes, There are three main methods for invoking any deity. The third method is the dramatic, perhaps the most attractive of all. Certainly it is so to the artist's temperament, for it appeals to his imagination through his aesthetic sense. He goes on to explain the dramatic method. In the third method, identity is attained by sympathy. It is very difficult for the ordinary man to lose himself completely in the subject of a play. But for those who can do so, this method is unquestionably the best. The foremost Satanist taught that the best way to experience demonic possession was to act in a play, or in our day's terms, a movie. Konstantin Stanislavski, considered by many to be the father of several modern acting techniques, including the method, resurrected many of these ancient ideas and has initiated countless actors and actresses over the last hundred years into these occult ideologies. Stanislavski stated that nine-tenths of acting a role out was based on a spiritual experience in which the actor was to be transformed into someone else. Other popular forms of acting similarly involve occult principles whereby one is able to open themselves up to be possessed and taken over. As you shall clearly see, Hollywood is a breeding ground for the activity of demonic and lying spirits. The most famous celebrities of the 20th and now 21st centuries were and are being used to teach and reshape the moral compass of the world in preparation for the new age under the Antichrist. The whole reason for this video is in accordance with what the Bible says. Don't be partakers in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And that's exactly what this video is. It's an expose. It's to show people what's going on behind the scenes because you're not going to see this on Extra or Entertainment Tonight or 60 Minutes. All this information right here is, are things that are that they're being kind of pushed off to the side or hidden from people. It says in the Bible that as Christians we're not supposed to be ignorant of Satan's schemes, but sadly many people are ignorant of Satan's schemes and how he works. Because the ultimate reality, again, Ephesians 6.12 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but at rulers, authorities, and powers in the spiritual realms, in the heavenly realms. It's important to understand that Satan's M.O. throughout human history has been to work through people, what the Bible calls sons of disobedience, those who are in rebellion to God, Satan will use to draw others away from God and harden their hearts against God. In fact, it's not just present day that we're talking about. We have to look back to see where this really started. In the 1920s, the homage bestowed upon him earned him the names The Great Lover and The Love God, Rudolf Valentino, who was considered the premier actor of his day. He was so absolutely hounded by publicity. Crowds would gather. I've heard tales of women picking up cigar butts in the streets and cherishing them. It was just insanity. However, what most people are not aware of is that Valentino and his wife Natasha were in communication with demonic spirits and relied on them for direction in his films. This was a known fact in Hollywood. The actress Colleen Moore confessed, Every night Natasha would hold a seance, calling forth help from the spirit world in her creative undertaking. Then, pencil and paper in hand, she would go into a trance and start writing. After her outpourings were typed up, they were brought to the set the next day and given to the director. Almost overnight, unbridled sexual promiscuity, once considered sinful, was now redefined as exciting, popular, and trendy. When millions of Valentino's fans watched his movies and surrendered to the lustful passions they incited, they were responding to stories and messages that came from demons. The Valentinos were initiated into what is called automatic writing in the occult. When the pen in a person's hand will write out information from a spirit, Yet the person is in an altered state of consciousness, rendering them incapable of fully knowing the communication until it is completed. The Valentinos wrote, The more we investigated this remarkable gift of automatic writing, the more convinced we became of the great truth which lay behind it. The truth of evolution and the truth of communication with the so-called dead. God forbids contact with the dead and condemns those who engage in such practices. Be very careful not to imitate the detestable customs. For example, do not let your people practice fortune-telling or sorcery, or allow them to interpret omen or engage in witchcraft, or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics, or call forth the spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is an object of horror and disgust to the Lord. 
The Valentinos drew many of their starstruck fans into the satanic teachings of Madame Blavatsky and Aleister Crowley. This occult craze exploded at word of Valentino's untimely death. Biographer Irvin Schulman recalls, In Hollywood, tarot cards, crystal balls, Ouija boards, and hoodoo powers were complete sellouts, and studio warehouses reported thefts of cauldrons and other bits of hardware associated with magic. Valentino's movies and screen image brought liberation from the dominating attitudes of the day regarding modesty and sexual chastity and set in motion a societal sexual movement never before experienced in the country. In the scripture, Satan is called the pornographic one who revels in perverting the proper purpose of sex. The world has seen an incredible sexual revolution that took root in the 1960s, but Satan began to break down the biblical boundaries of sex as early as the 1920s by using Valentino and his wife Natasha, who were devout occultists that depended on the creativity of demons for the movie scripts that Valentino would act out before the nation and the world. Satan has duped millions of souls in dark theaters through his faithful servants. Greta Garbo was another reigning screen queen who was known as the Immortal One. Her movie, The Flesh and the Devil, appropriately begins with the title card. When the devil cannot reach us through the spirit, he creates a beautiful woman to tempt us through the flesh. Was Garbo opened up to the occult and was Satan using her to draw men away from the truth? Garbo answers this question and recalls her plight during the country's strong adherence to Judeo-Christian values. I didn't have anyone to whom I could talk freely, so I went to occultists, devil worshippers, mind readers, and those who accompanied themselves with the summoning of spirits. During my dreams, I heard their voices. Garbo frequently contacted spirits and sought instruction and guidance from them. She recalled how this led me to astrology, occultism, and magic. I read books and magazines on these elusive subjects. Later, when reading alone could not satisfy my interest, I began searching out mediums, fortune tellers, card readers, and anyone else with extrasensory perception. Because she was so dynamic on screen, her enticing portrayals of seduction, adultery, lust, murder, and worship of Eastern gods continuously captivated audiences around the globe. Many Christians at that time failed to realize the fact that they were taken in changeling stories and that Garbo was a willing participant with these messages in her films. It is devastating how people will turn away from the salvation that Jesus Christ offers from sin that leads to life to chase after the fame and fortune that the world offers which only leads to death. Throughout the 1930s, motion pictures were one of the mainstays of the Great Depression, and attendance to movie theaters skyrocketed. Hello, folks. I'm Mr. Brockner at uh, Mr. Gorman's Christmas Theater to see the uh, grand opening of premiere of my new picture. I'm no angel. Of course, I didn't call it I'm no angel for nothing. Uh, don't forget, you want to see me sometime. Movie star Mae West was also known as the Queen of Sex and the Statue of Libido. Her work helped to topple the biblical sexual boundaries that were deeply embedded in the people of the early 20th century. She can have a romance with somebody outside of wedlock. I've got another man in my life. It was pretty raw. I don't know how many that makes. It was pretty raunchy for that era. Well, when I'm good, I'm very good. But when I'm bad, I'm better. No star had greater impact in the long run than Mae West. Mae West was a one woman sexual revolution. West's contact with the spirit world was responsible for producing the scripts that catapulted her into stardom as the queen of sex. West's lascivious screenplays that entertained and taught millions were actually formulated in the spirit world and broadcast through her. She became interested in ESP and psychic phenomenon. She would often hold evenings of psychic readings. West was also in frequent communication with demonic spirits and relied on them for direction and inspiration. And her interest in psychics and the world beyond really became a whole world for herself. West attests to her psychic navigators as the forces. Popularized by the Star Wars films, the force has long been held as a demonic power and inspiration in occult circles. West's occult teacher and guide, Kenny Kingston, recalls how multiple spirits would regularly possess May and use her like a puppet. When she was upset that no one had been able to come up with a script idea, she had walked about her room saying, Forces, forces, come to me, help me write a script. She would begin to hear voices and images as the plot was revealed to her. May would summon stenographers to work with her around the clock as she would lie in bed in a trance-like state, dictating as the spirits entered. You see, it's like this, dearie. I need an idea for a picture I want to do. So I say, forces, forces, I need some good dialogue for my new picture. Please help me out. So I call in a stenographer and dictate the whole thing at once. I just open my mouth and out it comes. Uh, you were wonderful tonight. I'm always wonderful at night. <laughs>
The book of Proverbs states, As a ring of gold in a pig's snout, so is a beautiful woman who lacks discretion. This description is very fitting, not only for Mae West, but for the vast majority of women who directly entertain our nation on a daily basis. It's also very important for me to explain that by having a television set in our house or, or watching TV, that doesn't make us bad. I'm not saying we can't have that. This is just a piece of plastic with a bunch of glass tubes and wires. That's all it is. That in of itself is not bad. Another example I like to use is a gun or a printing press or an airplane. I can go to a gun range and shoot a gun for practice, or I can use it to go rob a bank and kill someone. I can use a printing press to print Bibles or to print pornography. I can get in an airplane and fly to another country, or I can get in an airplane and drive it right into the World Trade Centers and kill thousands of people. It's how we use them. And TV is the same way. In and of itself, it's not bad, but it's how it's used. It's how it speaks to us. It's, it's what it communicates to us. It's who it makes us. But oftentimes, the Lord wants to just have time with us. I mean, TV's been around for 60 years. What did people do before that? They spent time with the Lord. They spent time with their family. Joan Crawford was also hungry for Satan's direction with her films. The occultist Kingston described her summoning of spirit guides on the set. When Miss Crawford arrived on a movie set, she immediately requested the air conditioning be turned up higher. I always do my best work when the set is cold, she said. A true believer, she felt the coldness would bring in the spirits to help with her performance. Crawford aligned herself with these spirits to receive their power and used her influence to draw people away from Christianity. Miss Thompson, I have come to make you a gift the most precious gift that life can offer. The gift I offer is free. If you will accept your atonement without resentment or grief, the way will be found for you. You can choose but one of two paths. What's the second choice? Destruction. And who's gonna destruct me? Oh, no, Mr. Davis. Your God and me could never be shipwrecked. And the next time you talk to him, you can tell him this for me, that Sadie Thompson is on her way to... The devil in you was strong, my poor Sadie Thompson. Evil has claimed you as its own. This is your last chance, Sadie Thompson. Kneel with me and pray. Let go of me. Ah, oh, you make me laugh. After living a light complete with fortune, friends, and fame, Crawford was left angry, bitter, and alone. Sin never blesses anyone, but it always brings cursed destruction. Crawford took Satan's bait, her soul in exchange for power, but found out too late that Satan does not give true life, but only death to body and soul. As Alan Alda declared of the movie industry, There's plenty of money to be had, but you also lose your soul. Jesus said, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? No amounts of pleasures are worth eternal life in hell separate from God. Don't be fooled by the glitz and the glam of the entertainment industry. Why would you follow the direction and messages on the screen of those who are admittedly losing their own souls? Who's talking? Would you shut up? Actress Marlena Dietrich never took a script without consulting her astrologist who had ties with the Lester Crowley. Come on, read my future for me. She depended on the spirit world to direct her and guide her into performances such as The Seven Sinners, The Devil is a Woman, The Woman One Longs For, Nights of Love, Desire, The Lady is Willing, and Touch of Evil. The occult guided Dietrich into these films. In turn, Dietrich wanted to guide people into a new mindset and using her influence, initiate the youth into astrology. Dietrich said, Have your child's horoscope made. The knowledge you gain from the horoscope will help you know where to exert your influence and where to relax. If you have many children, the horoscopes will be your answer to many riddles. If you have their horoscopes, you have the beginnings of explanation long before the time. God's word warns that astrology will not save in the day of judgment. Disaster will come upon you, and you will not know how to conjure it away. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. Dietrich was opposed to the scriptures and wanted to follow the occult ideals of the New Age. Just as Satan's plan is to get mankind to doubt God's word as he did with Eve in the Garden of Eden, when he deceived Eve saying, Did God really say? 
So Dietrich also echoes Satan's deception to draw people away from the truth. Das ist ja alles, um sich zu trösten. Das ist, kommt doch alles aus der Bibel. Nein, aber das kann man doch nicht glauben. Ne? The fact is that Dietrich was a sellout who knew that the movie industry was destroying people's souls. Souls that she baited and trapped as an on-screen instructor of depravity. She admitted. And then there are the programs, poised and ready to invade your home, materialized by one turn of the knob. The violence, debauchery, the sugar-dripping falsity, glorified depravity, vulgarity, the age-old reagents of allurement are there to search you out. Satan is called the father of lies in the Bible and he revels in encouraging others to speak lies and deceptions and oftentimes works through humor in order to disarm us. When the sitcom I Love Lucy, starring Lucille Ball, first appeared in the 1950s, many people at the time had a huge problem with it because it centered around a manipulative woman who was constantly lying to her husband, family, and friends. Okay, I'll tell him the truth. Don't you dare! Her lies and deceptive behavior were clothed in humor, and while it was difficult for many to receive in the 1950s, today we have deteriorated so far morally that no one even bats an eye. As proof positive that Satan was behind the dishonest theme the show presented, one must only consider the impetus for Ball's critical decision to go forward with it. The deciding factor that led her to produce the infamous I Love Lucy was one that would be ratified and communicated through a supernatural experience with the spirit. According to occult and spiritualist tradition, it was the spirit of actress Carol Lombard who guided Lucille Ball into taking a chance on television and accepting the offer to star in I Love Lucy. When the glamorous comedian, who had died in an airplane crash of 1942, appeared to Lucy in 1951, it was considered very risky to leave the large screen for the small one. Because Lucille Ball accepted the spirit's urging to take a chance, honey, she made television history. Our mission will be accomplished. Lucille would contact demonic spirits and receive messages from them. She told her medium, I want to thank you again for bringing in my teacher and spirit. I've read about some of the seances you've held. I always thought it would be fascinating to bring in a spirit. James Dean, whose acting abilities have been praised for decades, fostered a rebellious streak in an entire generation of youth. Today, Jimmy Dean's legacy continues. The only other performers who, in death, have become larger than life are Elvis Presley and Marilyn Monroe. His posters still decorate the bedroom walls of many young girls. Guys, consciously or unconsciously, emulate Dean's detached insolence. How did Dean attain the larger-than-life ability on screen? Dean was not a stranger to the occult, and his friends and acquaintances have spoken of how he would seek out the spirits of the dead to harness their power. Dean himself admitted, I have a fairly adequate knowledge of satanic forces. Dean became empowered as an actor through the occult. Close friend and co-star Dennis Hopper reflected on Dean's acting. He was totally transformed when the camera began to roll. He suddenly was the character. Strange things were coming out of him. Dean's instructions to Hopper for achieving success with his performances was simply to leave yourself open to the spirits. Dean actually believed that an entity would inhabit him. He describes it as sort of two people in the same skin, telescoping back from the other. The person inside would seem to drift up to the surface of the skin. The seven-year itch blew the lid off 1950s conservatism. Hey, wait a minute! It shocked audiences with its irreverent look at marital infidelity. I mean, I wouldn't be lying on the floor in the middle of the night in some man's apartment drinking champagne if he wasn't married. And showcased Marilyn Monroe in her most sexually suggestive role to date. Let me just go put something on. I'll go into the kitchen and get dressed. The kitchen? Yes, when it's hot like this. You know what I do? I keep my undies in the icebox. Marilyn Monroe has been called the greatest sexual icon of the 20th century. She was the sexual icon of her particular time and became, I think, the sex star of the century. She could make you do anything in the world from that big screen. Many people in the 1950s were shocked by Monroe's behavior and sexual prowess. She said, what has Marilyn Monroe got that a million other women have and prefer not to show? Well, that's pretty vulgar if you ask me. However, she was used as a change agent to help catapult our nation into the free sex movement of the 1960s. I have a message for your wife. You can see those early signs of changing values. I'd like to stay here with you tonight. I'd like to sleep here. I think it's very nice, but I'd rather it were me. 
I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Very nice. Some girl. Monroe attributed her ability to affect the public to other entities that would inhabit her and take her over. She was known for entering into deep trances before each scene. One of Monroe's close personal psychics recalled how she would draw attention from the spirit world, asking for their guidance. When she saw a camera, any camera, she lit up and was totally different. The moment the shot was over, she fell back into her not very interesting position. And I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> When describing the acting phenomena that described her, the tortured Monroe attested to someone else working in her. Jekyll and Hyde, more than two. I'm so many people. They shock me sometimes. I wish it was just me. Don't fight it. Relax. Marilyn Monroe compared herself and her work to that of a siren. In Greek mythology, a siren was a woman that would present herself as irresistibly pleasing to the senses and lure men passing by to their deaths. Monroe's films and exhibitionist attitudes indeed lured many men to their spiritual deaths. These commands and this teaching will keep you away from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of an adulterous woman. Don't lust for her beauty. Don't let her coyness seduce you. For a prostitute will bring you to poverty, and sleeping with another man's wife may cost you your life. Listen to me, my sons, and pay close attention to my words. Don't let your heart stray away toward her. Don't wander down her wayward path, for she has been the ruin of many. Numerous men have been her victims. Her house is the road to the grave. Her bedroom is the den of death. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave for she does not care about the path to life. Like a Lorelei, flaunting her charms as she lured men on and on to their eternal destruction. Eternal destruction. Eternal destruction. The first video that we had focused on violence, and it categorically showed that violence does in fact influence the youth. In fact, decade-long studies have shown clearly that violence will make children more aggressive if they watch it on TV over and over again. That debate's over. In fact, people that have done it say, there's no need even studying it anymore. We know that it's true. Now, if that's true, we have to say that all other genres affect too, because now it's a house of cards. Our brains are not genre specific. You can't just say, well, violence influences my kid, but not portrayals of sex or drugs or cheating or lying or stealing or these different things. They all do. I'm Mike Wallace. Sometimes it's hard to pinpoint just when a social revolution begins. Today Crowley is gone, but the spirits behind his principles are still at work to seduce the youth right out from underneath the noses of their parents. In the case of the sexual revolution, many dated in 1961. Beginning then, relations between the sexes changed radically. More people began having sex before marriage. They had sex at a younger age. The divorce rate soared. Men and women could talk about sex openly. There was a new frankness about homosexuality. All of this, it has been said, a social revolution. And it was inevitable that the free love and liberated sex of the counterculture became keystones for the mainstream pop culture. The 1960s witnessed a topsy-turvy occult infiltration based on the mechanics of Crowley's axiom, do what thou wilt. The 1960s movement specifically affected the youth of the country and spawned the eclectic hippie movement that has put on a different social mask in our day. After the foundation had been laid through the 1950s and most of the nation was ready for revolution, Satan turned up the heat in the 1960s and set into motion his plan of deceiving the hearts of the nation. We're in the uh, very throes of a new satanic age. The evidence is all around us. All we have to do is look at it. After the Church of Satan was established, Anton LaVey opened a film office where he could instruct and guide popular filmmakers. LaVey specifically targeted Hollywood to become his primary means for satanic evangelism. Quick to participate, many celebrities were devout, outspoken supporters for the Church of Satan and its causes. Kim Novak, Jane Mansfield, Tina Louise, and Sammy Davis Jr. are a few who openly lent their fame to the satanic agenda in the 1960s. We are superior by the imagination, the creativity that is the heart and the very soul of the Satanist. 
Anton LaVey praised the work that celebrities have done for Satan's kingdom. You've got quite a legacy of satanic writers, film producers, and directors who have made their own packs. They've proven themselves to be cunning, wit, and courage beyond the best of their time. These people that have sold their souls for fame, power, and fortune are being used to push the New Age philosophies, or as what Anton LaVey refers to as the new satanic religion. Sammy Davis Jr. was a notable actor in Hollywood and most well known for his then risque Rat Pack shows. Anton LaVey declared Sammy Davis Jr. was a dear friend and often put himself on the line when it was professionally hazardous to do so. He brought many influential persons into the Church of Satan and shared his own personal life with me. He was a sensitive, articulate, and very satanic individual. During his Rat Pack shows, Davis would use the stage as a podium to plug psychics and praise the mysterious messages he received through them from the other side. Another actress of the 1960s was Jane Mansfield. She also enveloped herself in witchcraft and black magic and was escalated to the position of high priestess within the Church of Satan. More than anything else, Mansfield wanted success as a movie star. LeVay recalled telling Mansfield that her dreams were attainable through satanic power. The devil has supreme power on this earth, he said. If you want anything here, the devil can give it to you if you join him. Mansfield became one of the most popular and talked about actresses of the 1950s and 1960s. Her movies were replete with risque sex and immorality for her day. I wasn't a stranger to permitting my bus to be photographed. <laughs> I had already done that. Here's the Playboy issue, which shows the movie I was in. Promises, promises. It showed just about everything that Jane Mansfield had to show. Mansfield sold out to the principles of the Satanic Bible and expressed them in her films. LaVey says, Jane was very proud of the fact that if she liked something enough, she would commit it to memory. At the time, the Satanic Bible was still in monograph form. Jane had poured over those pages until she knew most of it by heart. Ten females to each male. Ten females to each male. Peter was absolutely brilliant on the first take. Peter Sellers was a struggling actor whose career was on the rocks until he embraced demonic power. After selling his soul, he became the highest paid actor in Hollywood. The second take, he was even better. With three new Pink Panther adventures, all of which attained colossal box office success. <coughs> Sellers, the has-been, was once again one of the world's highest paid performers. And listen, Fairy, do you sell beer here too? Among other things, yes. Peter Sellers admits that he was possessed by the very spirits the Bible forbids when he was acting in his performances. It's rather like being a medium and laying yourself wide open and saying, I want a character to inhabit my body, or I want a spirit to take charge of me so that I can produce what I hope to produce. Well, I try and keep this young man happy. Star Trek is a cultural icon, and it's part of the lexicon now. Replete with New Age iconography, the Star Trek shows categorically deal with issues such as telekinesis, mental telepathy, atheism, psychic phenomena, channeling, mind transference, entities cohabiting the same body, and other occult themes and ideologies that were strung throughout the series. The creator of the rage, Gene Roddenberry, is responsible for much of the current space age mania that has become ingrained within the culture today. Star Trek's a way of life, man. It's a good way of life. It's, it teaches us all. Not surprisingly. Roddenberry had zero regard for Christ and was dead set on establishing a new age of thought that countered scripture with his cinema creations. In fact, Roddenberry recalled his Christian upbringing with disdain. I had never really paid much attention to the church sermon before. I was more interested in the deacon's daughter and what we might be doing between services. I listened to the sermon and I remember complete astonishment because what they were talking about were things that were just crazy. Roddenberry bought into the New Age lie that we could become gods and expressed these thoughts through characters and stories on his shows. Roddenberry said, It's not the Judeo-Christian God. Creating Star Trek was a very spiritual experience. It's my world. It's that divinity in us that we call God. Cosmic thoughts, gentlemen. We were speculating. Is God really out there? Maybe he's not out there, Bones. Maybe he's right here. The storylines that made Roddenberry famous were in fact given to him in conduit fashion from the demonic kingdom. Recounting his role as a medium, he states, What happens is that I bring them out into this world, the world of humanity, and they take their place among them, among us. But I don't think I create them. They already exist. I just introduce them. That's really where the whole idea of Star Trek came from. I'm just a vehicle, a transporter. Da -da -da. 
da dun 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 Well, I come from six feet under with a dead guy on my knee. I'm heading down to Hades for to spend eternity. The sitcom Roseanne, starring the woman by the same name, was the nerve center for anti-Christian sentiment in the 1990s. Even worse than you thought. Well, what kind of crowd? He's not doing drugs, is he? No, no. <laughs> He's going to church. Oh, God, no. <laughs> In her autobiography, My Lives, she spoke of leaving her body and communicating with voices from unseen beings. When I went away, I left my body completely and could hear other voices all around me chattering about how God would make me strong and how nobody could really get me. A spiritual message, really. The voices that she heard were not from the God of the Bible. The Ouija board wasn't sending me a message from the dead. She has engaged in automatic writing. Roseanne writes of her channeling. It would all just come pouring out as if I were in a trance, and not until I reread it did I know what it was about. Sometimes it would scare me to read it because it seemed to belong to another place and time, and I would wonder where did I get this? These demonic influences used Roseanne like a puppet to usher society into Crowley's New Age philosophies through her shows. Oh my God! It's not hard to connect the dots and see the common denominators that have worked through the lives of the Hollywood elite. The secular philosopher Socrates insightfully explained acting's essential spirit contact and possession. In like manner, the muse first of all inspires men because they are inspired and possessed. They are simply inspired to utter that which the muse impels them. For not by art or knowledge do you say what you say, but by possession. Socrates had a common understanding of the demonic power utilized by actors. This muse, or giver of creative inspiration, as shown through Socrates' statements, has always been perceived as a spirit. Anton LaVey of the Church of Satan instructs his followers and clarifies this fact. Keep yourself constantly open to the demons who will whisper in your ear. An old meaning of demon used to be closer to muse, a guiding inspirational spirit. The muses, or demons, are still at work today. Alexandra Rose, the co-producer for The Other Sister, championed actress Juliette Lewis's ability to be totally taken over. Of Lewis, Rose says this. She just has that ability to transcend the reality of the moment and become the vessel for the muse. When she's acting, she is not Juliette Lewis. That to me is the sign of a really great actor. When you can let the muse take over, you look into their eyes and no one's home. Kevin Bacon relates. Part of acting is to lose yourself in the moment, to let the chaos or the muse come and just enter and happen organically. Bacon also attributes his successful acting to demons under the surface and as an actor, you have to keep them bubbling. The Matrix is Keanu Reeves who talks of having taken what he calls demon rides, says, It's hard to act in the morning. The muse isn't even awake. His series The Matrix is a hit with the youth and is filled with New Age preaching. Satan wants these philosophies to be presented in an acceptable light and is empowering Reeves to evangelize the children. Director Taylor Hackford revealed, Keanu is a very complex guy with lots of demons in him, and I was trying to tap and utilize that. Back when people would have idols, what they would do is they would put those idols in the main room in their house and they would center their furniture in their living room facing toward that idol because that's where people wanted their focus directed to. Oftentimes today, most of us have our furniture directed at what? The television set. And that in and of itself is not bad, but the question before God is, where is our heart? You know, the scripture says to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's his main thing. That's why he created us to have a heart relationship with us. If we feel convicted of something, that we should live a certain way, are we really loving Him if we don't do it? You know, Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. And then He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? So the very thing that we want to do is be a doer of what the Word of God says, would be a doer of our conviction, not just be a hearer only. Meryl Streep's uncanny ability to inflect true life accents and characters has completely astounded her viewers. As her co-star on the film Postcards from the Edge, McLean studied Streep's acting performances. McLean said, Or put another way, perhaps that is the true meaning of channeling. A channeler puts aside the conscious mind and surrenders to another identity. That's the phenomenon I saw in Meryl. True to Crowley's instructions, River Phoenix sought out demonic possession in order to attain superstar status. River saw a sign in turning 23. He'd started having bad dreams uh, that there were demons that he'd always dreamt about when he was a baby that were coming to take him away. 
Phoenix admitted, I don't think I'm a very good actor. Everything is kind of tentative, and at a certain point you click in and you just feel the spirit move you. I think I can root out characters pretty well. I can be possessed pretty well. Well, I've been an admirer of Aleister Crowley. I think that uh, I'm carrying on much of the work that uh, he started uh, over 100 years ago, and I think the 60s themselves. You know, Crowley said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. As goddaughter of Timothy Leary, America's drug guru of the 1960s, Winona Ryder is familiar with moving people through enchantment. At her best, which is considerable, Ryder can light up a screen with the skill of a sorceress. So writes Rolling Stone magazine of Winona Ryder, crediting her spirit guide for her cinematic exhibitions, Ryder states, My grandmother is still alive and has a lot of letters and pictures of relatives, and there's this one particular relative who was my age when she died. She was a violinist and an actor, and she looked like me. I have had this feeling for the last eight years that she was there guiding me and helping me with my performances. Vin Diesel also seeks contact with the supernatural, having stated, I'm going to do my best to channel the character on a spiritual level. Golden Globe and Oscar award winning Halle Berry also has spirit guides that empower her performances to be more convincing and alluring. Oh. <laughs> Berry told Oprah how she was empowered to win her Golden Globe award for her part in Dorothy Dandridge. Berry said, There were many moments on the set when a sort of strange aura sort of took over. And not only me, but other people would say, they'd come up to me and they would say, She's with you today, I feel it. And I often thought her spirit showed up to say thank you and to guide me. As you honor me, who you really honor is the eminent Dorothy Dandridge. Oftentimes the most innocent can be the most dangerous and deceptive. Oprah Winfrey will never let her tens of millions plus fan base know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, but regularly presents New Age deceptions and lies on her shows which are transmitted to housewives and families around the globe. Her influence with her magazine, TV channel, and book club are staggering. Where does she obtain direction for her shows and enterprises? Time Magazine gives us a frightening answer. Oprah Winfrey calls these her go there moments. It is during these moments, usually while jogging the winding trails on her Indiana farm, that Winfrey becomes overwhelmed by the sense that old spirits are trying to get in touch with her. And it is during these moments that the woman who loves to talk stops dead in her tracks simply to listen. Winfrey says she has come to know each of them personally and calls them in at will to guide her in her work. Another celebrity many will be shocked to discover communicated with demonic spirits and even received movie scripts from them was Michael Landon. Of his dead father, Michael Landon stated, I felt my father's presence with me, enlightening my memories. I really heard my father speak to me from another dimension, filling my mind with just the right words. The story came so fast and was so right. In three days, the script was complete. While it is true that Michael Landon did present Christian principles in his shows, shows like Highway to Heaven presented a touchy-feely New Age God that anyone could have a relationship with without knowing Christ like the scriptures clearly state. Jesus made it clear when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Having endorsed on-screen homosexuality, spiritism, sexual immorality, and violence to list a few, Leonardo DiCaprio believes himself to be a vessel put on earth for acting. Vessels are meant to be filled and DiCaprio has opened himself up to evil spirits for this purpose. As Agnieszka Holland, DiCaprio's director in Total Eclipse explains it, Leo's like a medium. He opens his body and his mind to receive messages coming from another person's life. He's the new Leonardo DiCaprio. There's nobody like him and he's like nobody. Um, he's so special. He's a chameleon. He can do anything. It's, it's shocking. I mean, he was just born to be an actor. It's the same way with Meryl. You see this and you just, you're dazzled by their talent. DiCaprio's director, Baz Luhrmann, stated that with Leo, you might see 30 people come out of him in a day. Oh, what's this? My poor Matilda. Don't be upset. Don't cry. This is a bad dream. One day I'll wake up. Love, Paul. Nice, was it? The average kid spends 20 hours a week in front of the television set, which translates into this. That by the time the average kid is six years old, He'll spend more time with the television set than he will with his father for his entire lifetime. Now who has more influence? Because there's really no boundaries, no right and wrong. They're taught 24-7 that they can do what they want or live how they want. So it's so critical that we raise the kids, not these Hollywood insiders, not these people that decide what they should believe and not believe. It's critical that we set the bar for the kids and we instruct them the way the Lord would have us instruct. 
Prior to becoming the leader of a cult, Charles Manson spent years digesting the drug-ridden and occult world of Haight-Ashbury and fancied himself as a movie producer. Manson was deeply worshipful of Satan and encouraged his family of followers to be as well. Maybe I should have killed four or five hundred people, then I would have felt better. Then when I felt like I really offered society something. Convicted member of the Manson clan, Susan Atkins said, in time, he was to call himself Satan and the devil sometimes. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. There'd be none of you left. There'd be none of you left. His followers were brainwashed into compliance. Using music and movies, Manson was able to get inside the heads of his followers and lay whatever foundation he wanted. Family members who resided with Manson at the movie ranch have described how Manson would play movies over and over all night long. These were used to indoctrinate and break down the inhibitions of his followers. One family member stated, The family had things where they'd show flicks. They were running four or five movies at once, you know, playing tapes at the ranch. For movie screens, they hung up white sheets for these grim events. And the films shown seemed to have been reels of family happenings, music, the knife dance, lots of sex, but other films also. This set the stage for Manson to further twist their impressionable minds. We are what you have made us. We were brought up on your TV. We were brought up watching Gunsmoke, Have Gun Will Travel, FBI, Combat. This guy you were looking to for, you know, entertainment or whatever you want to call it, was uh, killing all through the show. Every show we ever watched was all killing, all those old-time gangster movies where, uh, you know, it was all exciting. They were in the cars with the low hats on and they were cruising and they were shooting out the windows or, you know, it was all exciting and, and uh, we are what you made us. Let us not forget that in TV we have the greatest instrument for mass persuasion in the history of the world. An important thing to look at here is you look at someone like Madonna, who's very popular in the mainstream media, and Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, who has definitely influenced the media on different levels. And both those people acknowledge the power of the media, and they know that it influences people. And that's where they make all their money. That's their bread and butter, is the media. So they know they're influencing all kinds of people. And they know that they're corrupting the culture, because when they were asked if their kids were allowed to watch TV, they said no. In fact, Madonna said that she thought MTV and television was poison. So now the question that's begged is, well, wait, why are these people that are so influential in the media, why will they not allow their kids to be corrupted, but be such prominent players in corrupting ours? You put it out there, and hopefully they, they get it. I always like to think of it as like, I've got them sitting there, whip a little message at them, whip a little moral at them, whip a little of what my view of the world is, because that's what every good filmmaker does. And we'll lead the world into the 21st century, and I'll make a profit on their backs. This constant barrage of TV propaganda has left an indelible impression on the youth of the world. In accord with the Lester Crowley's mandate for an army of youth whereby he could control the world, the demon-possessed and master propagandist Adolf Hitler declared that film was to be used for the education of the youth. Propaganda, also called mind raping by the Nazis, was aimed at brainwashing the youth and was so powerful that Hitler once bragged they will never again be free for the rest of their lives. Adolf Hitler opportunistically set the campaign for his occult agenda in motion by indoctrinating children at a very early age. In order to completely own the minds of the children, he created the Youth Film Hours, where it was mandatory to watch movie after movie that painted the Nazis in a positive light. These Youth Film Hours were so successful that they even replaced Sunday School. He outlined, My program for educating youth is hard. Weakness must be hammered away. In my castles of the Teutonic Order, a youth will grow up before which the world will tremble. I want a brutal, domineering, fearless, cruel youth. Youth must be all that. It must bear pain. There must be nothing gentle about it. The free, splendid beast of prey must once again flash from his eyes. That is how I will eradicate thousands of years of human domestication. That is how I will create the new order. Coincidentally, the last troops to hold out against Allied forces in Berlin, Germany were armies comprised of the youth. Joseph Goebbels, a minister of enlightenment and propaganda, had clear objectives for the Nazi filmmakers. I kept impressing my people with one basic truth. Repeat everything until the last, most stupid person has understood. 
How many movies and shows really say the same things over and over in different ways to us? That you can live as you want, be it free sex, drugs, exalting yourself above others, that life's problems can be worked out without God, or that there is no God. Don't talk about right and wrong with me, man, because I just don't give a It's easy to condemn the Nazi regime as barbaric, yet we are being duped in the same ways as they were by a regime that rejects God and exalts immorality. It was and is America's first form of sex education. You got it. Wanna make love to me? Oh, yes, yes. You leave your life outside the theater, go into that dark room, and it draws you closer to the person on screen. Don't stop. Let's do it. Get on your knees. There is a gorgeous woman <laughs> on my bed. You guys are gonna f aren't you? You have someone like that who's very sexually open, in fact, open. I'm a horny girl, what can I say? You like a little freedom or something? You want to dabble? We can all, you know, we can all have sex together. I am doing what I feel like doing. Well, what do you feel like doing? Orgy! Have an orgy! 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 It never occurred to me um, that we could have sex with multiple people uh, together and that, like, it would be okay. Hollywood learned the basic lesson, when in doubt, go to sex. People have this mistaken notion that the Hollywood system has principles, morals, or values. It doesn't. It doesn't. I probably spent a month with hookers and pimps. A prostitute is a woman who will give you a great deal for relatively little money. Today, the movie industry, empowered with demonic force and authority, is shamelessly indoctrinating us with the same messages of carefully crafted and moral propaganda over and over. And what classes are you taking? Mm, Gangbang 101, freebase tutorial, and oral sex workshop. So what if these women are in porn? They're not hurting anybody. To the contrary, TV can hurt people. Jennifer Aniston admits, TV is definitely guilty of putting out unrealistic images of what is socially acceptable. I'm guilty of it too. Bill Cosby asks, the networks say they don't influence anybody. If that's true, why do they have commercials? Why am I sitting there with jello pudding? A movie that we can never forget mm -hmm. and love so much it's part of our youth, it's part of our lives. Natalie Portman states the obvious. Films have a big influence on young people. Oh, movies are important and they're dangerous because it's, um... You go into a, a little dark room and become incredibly vulnerable. And it can completely misshape you. And Kristen Johnson of NBC's Third Rock from the Sun states, I know I'm biting the hand that feeds me, but TV can really suck the brains right out of your body. If those who control and run the media machine admit that they clearly influence how we think, act, and what we aspire to, should we not be more careful to make sure that these influences positively glorify God in our lives and to responsibly censor and omit those that do not? The book of Proverbs states, Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the issues of life. Women are not just moms or bitches or Madonna's whores. Not only does Hollywood oftentimes have more influence on your kids than you do, but many of them arrogantly look down their noses at the movie and TV audiences who they greatly influence. Director George Lucas mocked, Popcorn pictures have always ruled. Why do people go see these popcorn pictures when they're not good? Why is the public so stupid? That's not my fault. I just understood what people like to go see, and Stephen has too, and we go for that. I've entertained. I've pleased your children. I've pleased your wives. I've pleased you, you sons of bitches. These were just nose-thumbing movies. They, they are there to thumb their nose at your values, saying, uh, we don't care if you like us, we don't like you. Are we stupid as they claim and do we sell out our lives and the lives of our children to people who admittedly don't like us and knowingly destroy our souls? David Putnam, producer of Chariots of Fire and The Mission, confessed. Movies are powerful, good or bad, they tinker around inside your brain. They steal up on you in the darkness of the cinema to form or conform social attitudes. In short, cinema is propaganda. The world at large has undergone a massive propaganda movement on a supernatural level that has captured the hearts of the youth with terrifying consequences and results. Demons have excessively introduced wasting doctrines of spiritual refuse that people have no idea that they're even receiving. Dr. Eric Pepper, a researcher who has conducted extensive studies on the influence of film, draws attention to his observations in that we do process what we see. He says, the horror of television is that the information goes in. It goes right into our memory pool and perhaps we react to it later, but we don't know what we're reacting to. 
So later on, you're doing things without knowing why you're doing them or where they came from. History that Hollywood peddles adult material to children. Now let's see how the spoon-fed material has affected them. You've heard one insider describe how the Hollywood machine marketed his R-rated movie to an audience too young to go see it. What movie did you see? American Pie. I saw American Pie. American, American Pie, Pie too. too. American Pie. American Pie. I'm 15. 14. 15. 13. 12. 12. 13. Who wants me to touch Amber? Oh, yeah! I love lesbians. They're great. Two girls are lesbians. The lesbian scene. Lesbian. 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 That's hilarious. How aware are children of the corrosive influences and they seem to pick up everything like sponges. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like Play-Doh. Put a piece of Play-Doh on a table and it picks up everything. Kids are Play-Doh. They don't even know what they've picked up. He's the young wizard in training who's conjured up an international phenomenon. <laughs> For now, Harry Potter has the world under his spell. And from the looks of things, that's not going to change anytime soon. He's brave and adventurous. And he doesn't care what people tell him to do. Harry's friendly. Harry's not scared of anything. Harry Potter is braver than anyone I've ever met. Harry's amazing. Frighteningly, Satan's doctrines are taking root because people are not guarding themselves or their children against the schemes of the devil. I'm wicked. LeVay tells us how late in the game it is with our kids. He says, there's no need for packs with the devil anymore. These kids are already aligned with satanic forces. All kinds of people are witches. There are lawyers, doctors, nurses, um, school teachers, every walk of life. Raven Munani, owner of the store Raven's Flight, and herself a practicing witch, credits the 1996 movie The Craft for inspiring young women to explore the world of witches. I get a lot of teenage girls in here. You can always tell when the craft has been on TV because we get a big influx of girls looking for supplies. What about things like witchcraft? Um, do you think um, that's an evil thing that people should stay clear of? No, I don't. Not at all. Well, the bottom line is movies never close. 365 days a year, they're open and running. They never take a holiday. This is a great game plan for brainwashing people. I mean, we look back at 1940s Nazi Germany and we think, how could they be so gullible or how could they be so naive, you know, to fall into this, this whole propaganda thing. It's happening today on a large scale basis because all the Nazis had was big screens that people had to go to. We have this pumped right into our own homes 24 seven and people are being brainwashed all over the place. And it's a great game plan for brainwashing people. One of the reasons that God came down on Israel in the past was because they failed to see the difference between the clean and the unclean, or the holy and the profane. And our nation is falling prey to the same thing. We're not drawing lines anymore. There's no moral absolutes. That's why kids are growing up with these confused ideas about what's right and what's wrong. And the amazing thing is, is that the Bible tells us these things very clearly. And it shows us how we should live our lives. Because God created us, He knows how we should live. He's not confused about it, we are. That's why we're on that. That's why we as people get depressed and anxious and all these different things is because oftentimes we're not following the way we're supposed to live. It's like putting dirt in our car engines instead of oil. We were created to have God work through us, but oftentimes we just won't let Him. Homosexuality has definitely affected our culture, and many kids have grown up today not knowing whether it's right or wrong. It's a gray area, they're not sure. It's almost become trendy with the children now. It's really changing a lot. Pedophilia will be the next thing that's introduced as every great culture that has come before us, the Greeks, the Romans, they've fallen into pedophilia where it's actually normal. Not surprisingly, Harry Hay, who's the founder of the modern gay movement, was a follower of Aleister Crowley. He was also an actor who wanted to utilize the power of Hollywood celebrities in order to unlearn and destroy 2,000 years of Christianity and introduce Crowley's satanic philosophies regarding homosexuality and pedophilia to the unsuspecting public. Mr. Hay's plan has been working brilliantly. By joining and uniting all of us, we have really gained power. This has been the struggle, and we're winning. Television, more than any other medium, is leading the gay revolution. I'm gay. Erica Kane's daughter is gay. I'm gay. It means I'm a lesbian. You don't know how to kiss, do you? So you want me to prove it, lesbo? Well, the real world, I think, has been, in a way, solely responsible for a generation growing up with more tolerant views uh, around gay characters and gay people in general. It's kind of like making me open my mind to their world. God's word warns. 
do not practice homosexuality. It is a detestable sin. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality. His judgment serves as a sobering reminder that in his eyes, homosexuality is a perversion of sex that brings terrible consequences. The book of Romans describes the heart condition of those who choose the homosexual lifestyle. So God let them go ahead and do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. Instead of believing what they knew was the truth about God, they deliberately chose to believe lies. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal relationships with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men and, as a result, suffered within themselves the penalty they so richly deserved. And worse yet, they encouraged others to do them too. Hollywood has long endorsed the practice of homosexuality. You know, I think all the gay boys are going to take the business over. May West, during a purity and exaltations of free sex and homosexuality, were in accordance with Satan's plan to bring initiates into the New Age by presenting a new sexual venue that would launch society into blatant sexual revolution and rebellion to God's laws. I've got to be getting back to the mission. Sally's father is waiting for me. Mm, that ought to be interesting. The homosexual community has trumpeted Dietrich as an icon because she helped to desensitize people to homosexuality way before its time. Crowley, himself a homosexual and pedophile, outlined that the New Age movement was designed to draw people into these lifestyles to harden their hearts against God. His goal was to deceive the people and sell them Satan's lie. That sin didn't bring the suffering and pain the Bible describes, but that it brought freedom and liberation. So the thing worked for everybody of every sex. She was doing it to turn on both the woman and the man. It was so free. It was so free. Nudity for Marilyn Monroe always represented a certain form of freedom. One should credit her with a whole change in attitude in the pop culture related to nudity. Sexual freedom is something we feel is very important as a necessary requisite of the satanic church. It's hard to understand, if you hadn't lived before that time, what a major impact that freedom of a point of view did to people's brains. You say, wait, wait a minute, then, there's no, then there are no rules here. We project the voice of freedom forward beyond ourselves to the youth of today and to the generations of tomorrow. And make no mistake about it! We will not stop until we have achieved our freedom. Do not stand in our way. The church, the state, hormones will decide my fate. The church, the state, hormones will decide my fate. The day is coming. We, you know, we're going to like them. We're going to do them. Uh, we're going to take our freedom by any means necessary. I will do whatever I have to do to keep to stay free. If it's a choice between me staying alive and free and somebody else not staying alive, I'm willing to make that choice too. We're young! We're queer! We're gonna rule the world! I, mean, I think uh, it should be brought out that we not only condone, but we encourage all types of what would be called sexual perversities and deviations because we feel that in a few short years it'll be established that everyone is a sexual deviant, pervert, fetishist. We're happy to be here. We feel that Historically, we are part of this movement for liberation. All my life been attracted to younger boys. I love them. <laughs> How do I make myself attractive to boys? We feel a person should be free to indulge in all of the so-called fetishes, all of the so-called uh, uh, admirations that they would so desire. Through the decades, Hollywood has fueled the fires of this lie by peddling greater and greater waves of filth to numb our consciences. And like the frog in the proverbial pot, we are almost cooked. True freedom comes by turning from sin to Jesus Christ, who gives the abundant life. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Sadly, Satan has been deceiving hundreds of millions of people for decades that living for themselves and their desires will bring happiness. This is a farce. 
for hopelessness, depression, and overall despair are at all-time highs, as evidenced by increasing divorce rates, broken families, chemical and alcohol dependency, and packed mental institutions. Only Jesus can fulfill the greater purpose that you know you were created for. He said, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. It's so cool. I'll give you an example. They go like this, they go, hey dude, so I heard you're born again. So what's that like? And I go like this. Well, finally I'm at peace. They freak out because, let me tell you, Hollywood ain't at peace. And I go, but the best part is, it's really cool to be in Hollywood, you know, hanging out with you and be totally free from the bondage of sin. That's awesome. Walk in the newness of life he offers through his word and fill your mind with stories that give true life instead of Hollywood stories that enslave your soul. Satan's whole lie is really selling people this deception that they can live how they want, whatever it might be, and that they're really going to be free. In fact, Peter deals with this issue in the scriptures and he says, while they themselves promise you freedom, they're slaves to their own corruption and they're in bondage. And so the very people that are selling these lies that you can be free and that you can do whatever you want, they're enslaved themselves spiritually. And the only way to truly get free from that is through Christ. He's the only way. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through him. And many people are tied up in these things and haven't really realized that they've been wrapped up in shows or things that maybe have been influencing them, or maybe just been pulling them away from the Lord. You know, just getting them away from spending time with him and sharing with him or their families. And the scriptures are really clear. The, the scriptures speak of not running with the majority. The scriptures call us out and to be separate and to not go with the mainstream. The scriptures also speaks of things that are popular. Many people say, yeah, but it's popular and it's cool. Jesus said what's highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. And how often that's true in Hollywood. How often times the things that they peddle to us or that they are pitching to us are things that are contrary to what God would have us do. And many people know this. I mean, deep down, many people know that there's something wrong with the stuff they're watching, but they can't quite put their finger on it. And I think the cool thing about the video is it connects the dots and it shows, hey, there's an involvement here supernaturally. That's saying something. That's very powerful. The psalmist says in, in the book of Psalms, he said, I will set no unclean thing before my eyes. And what that means is it's, if there's something that's we're watching, if there's something that we're seeing, we ought not to, according to the scripture, if we know that it's wrong. The Bible says what's not of faith is sin. And so if we can't watch something in faith and we can't watch it with a good conscience, we really shouldn't set it before our eyes. The Lord would not have us do it. Some people feel that's a bummer. Like, well, there's only some things wrong, you know, with certain shows. There's only a little bit wrong here or there. There's a story of a father who taught a lesson to his kids one time. The kids came to him and they said, Dad, we want to go see a PG-13 movie. And the dad said, is it, is it clean? And the kids said, well, there's a few things that are wrong with it. You know, it's not perfect. And the dad said, well, then you probably shouldn't go see it. And they said, Dad, it's only a little bit. It's only a little bit of stuff. And the dad said, okay, how about before you guys go, we bake some cookies? The kid said, yeah, let's do it. So they bake the cookies, they whip them up in the bowl, and just before they put them in the oven, the dad goes in the backyard, and he gets some dog poo from the backyard. He puts it in the bowl, he mixes it in there. He puts it in the oven, bakes the cookies, pulls them out, puts them on a plate, and serves them to the kids. And the kids say, Dad... <laughs> Are you nuts? We're not going to touch this. And Dad says, why not? And the kids go, Dad, there's dog poo in these cookies. Why would we eat this? And the dad goes, yeah, but it's just a little bit. It's not a lot. It's only a little bit. And oftentimes, I think the Lord would say that to us. It's a little bit, but in other areas of our lives, we wouldn't even think about touching it. But it's easy to make exceptions and compromise sometimes with these things. Scriptures instruct us to stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love the world, you show that you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only the lust for physical pleasure, the lust for everything we see, and pride in our possessions. These are not from the Father. They are from this evil world, and this world is fading away, along with everything it craves. But if you do the will of God, you will live forever. Leave your confusing ways behind you. 
and begin to live. Parents, we need to guard our children now more than ever from these kidnappers of the mind and heart who smuggle death into their lives without remorse. Can we tell our parents? No! Even the one who claims to be the representative for Satan on this earth, Anton LaVey, proactively guards his son. When he was asked if he let his son watch TV, LaVey replied, no. He can when he's old enough, if he goes into it warned. Does a Satanist have more scruples than a Christian parent who follows the Bible, which is the best written book for parenting ever comprised? God tells us, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the message God has planted in your hearts. And remember, it is a message to obey, not just listen to. If you don't obey, you are only fooling yourself. Unfortunately, those who are entertained by spirits working through movie stars are being entertained directly by mediums. However, the Lord has set down specific, unchanging instructions for all of humanity. He warns against mediums, saying, As for the person who turns to mediums and to spiritists to play the harlot after them, I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. God prohibits turning to mediums, not because he is a cosmic killjoy, but because he loves us and wants to protect us. Hollywood is nothing but a repository of lies. Mel Gibson says, actors are all basically liars. Janine Garofalo says, Hollywood is built on lies, conning the American public like politics. Director Brian De Palma says, the camera lies all the time, 24 times per second. Marlon Brando explains how they are all liars. It makes me so sick. It's amazing, the people in the movie industry. The scriptures have foretold with amazing accuracy the growing rebellion against the faith that is culminating for the end times. Paul writes, The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. We have already seen that the word for actor is hypocrite, and that they and their Hollywood institution are leading the world astray through their lies. How then will these demons get their messages out to turn away people from the faith and follow after them? The very next verse tells us, Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with the hot iron. Hollywood is being utilized as an end-time propaganda machine of destruction as it teaches its demonic doctrines and lays waste those of God. This direct assault on God leaves you an active participant to one side or another. The scripture says that you cannot eat at the table of God and the table of demons. Accepted by acting musicians, nobody else will follow. Nobody else will follow. Who will you follow? In the past, those who ran the show were, according to Jesus, of their father the devil who wanted to carry out his desires. Some things never change. But even as Jesus pronounced his works of judgment upon the actors of his day, the same question may be posed to modern day actors and servants of Satan. How will you escape being condemned to hell? The only answer lies in Christ's words. Unless you repent, you too will likewise perish. May God deliver actors and actresses from the demonic strongholds of deception, and may He deliver Christians from the devil's vision. The studies have shown conclusively that if parents will just spend an hour a day with their kids, that their kids will grow dramatically different night and day. I think of how, as family members, we can spend time with each other and really make an impact on each other's lives. And one of the reasons that God came down on the people of Israel in the Old Testament was because they failed to differentiate the difference between the holy and the profane and the clean and the unclean. And we have this moral relativism today which makes everything gray. Nothing's right, nothing's wrong. How do we know what's right and wrong unless we get close to him and get close to the book? You know, if you're married, the way you got close to your wife is you didn't just put her up on a book stand and look at her every now and then. Or your husband, you just didn't put him in a closet and then open the door every now and then and say, how are you? You related to them. You got to know them, you talked with them, you spent time with them. If they wrote you a letter, you read it over and over probably, or at least a couple times to try and read between the lines or see what was going on there. We have a creator that wrote the best love letter to us ever, it's called the Bible. And it relates his plan for our lives. It relates who we are as men, who we are as women, who we are as children, who we are as fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, friends, workers. It covers every area of life and every dilemma that we could possibly go through, and every area we could possibly go through. And the book in itself is amazing because it was written over a 1,500 year span on three different continents, three different languages, and by 40 different authors, and it comprises 66 books. But when you put all the books together, they flow perfectly. It totally harmonizes with this book, and it shows that there's